Hey Flosstube, it's Stephanie. Finally back with an update. Um, it's been a little longer than I wanted it to be to do a new video, but the last few months have been crazy busy. It's the 1st of April now, and for the last few months, work has just been insane. And so um, I haven't had time to really sit down and do a video, but now that all the stuff we've been working on is done, and we're getting a little bit of quiet time, which is nice. So I'm finally able to sit down and do a video, which I'm so happy to be back talking with everyone. Oh, and I must say, hi, Remy. Hi, Riley. Hi, Baby Sawyer. Hi, Mans. That's my, Amanda. That's my sister. Uh, her girls told me, Mommy watches your videos too. So a little shout out to Amanda. And so I just wanted to give you an update. I, even though things have been really busy, I have been able to get some stitching in, which is nice and kind of what kept me sane the last few months. Um, I would have just crazy busy days at work and then could come home and stitch at least for like an hour or so just to kind of calm down and regroup. And, and I always try and do a little bit of stitching actually before I leave for work. Um, I think I mentioned this before, I don't remember, but I like to do a little stitching before I go to work because then I feel like I kind of did a little something for me before I go and work for someone else for a while. So um, I have been able to get some stitching done. I've taken um, two classes. Well, I took one class. I'm in, in the process of taking another one right now, which I will show you what's going on with that. And I have one mini finish, I'm calling that. Um, I'll explain that when I get there. And then um, I have two almost mini finishes. I'm kind of trying to focus on, well, my focus on this year is finishing projects. I'm trying to anyway. And mini finishes is what I'm kind of calling the little parts to finish the bigger project and um, kind of mark little milestones along the way, which is kind of fun rather than waiting for the big project to get done. I don't do a lot of little pro little projects to have it completed, so celebrating a little project within a big, bigger project is uh, kind of gets you through to the next level. So, um, And I do have one new start that I'm very excited about, so I will show you that too. So uh, let's talk some stitching. And then um, I'll give you some a quick book update. I have a great book to recommend. So uh, if you're interested, so so I've taken a few classes. I said, and um, I do a lot of classes with guilds, A and G guilds, which is the American Needlepoint Guild, and the local guilds, or EGA, which is Embroidery Guild of America, and the local guilds there too. Um, you can check online on their main website for chapters in your area. And they do a lot of workshops, which I love. I belong to a lot of guilds all around the country, actually. Um, most in California, but some around the country. Primarily because of workshops. I like to do the workshops. You get the opportunity to, take, to do projects you couldn't normally do. Because a lot of teachers only offer projects um, in classes. And so I... When there's an opportunity for a class, I jump at it, um, just because you don't know if their project's going to become available or not. And I love going to classes, so it's a lot of fun. I have one coming up in two weeks that um, I'll explain to you, which I'm, I'm very excited about. It's an annual class I take, and so um, it's a lot of fun. So the first class I took was in February. Um with a guild about an hour away from here. It was a class with Terry Dryden, who does um, needlepoint, counted needlepoint. Um, with her, in class, her canvases are drawn, and, which means she, ha you'll, well, I'll show you. Um, but she has an Etsy store if you want to check her out, and you can order kits from her or just patterns, because her patterns, um, can be done without having the canvas drawn. But when you take a class from her, she brings them already drawn. Um, and But you can buy kits from her and, or just the patterns. And she's she's such a lovely person. Um, it's Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, Dryden, D-R-Y-D-E-N. Um, she's also on Facebook if you want to kind of follow her on Facebook. And this project that we took the class from, she just posted on in her Etsy store. So you can get it. And it's a new design called Bargello Trio, she calls it. And this, 
trying to figure out which way it goes. I think it goes this way. That's the finish. That's what it looks like. Finished. Um, can also do it that way, I guess. Well, she has it on like that on the instructions. And then it, she offers, and she does have on her website, on her Etsy store, she offers it in two colorways. Um, and I don't think there's a picture. I'm looking to see if there's a picture of it all finished with both colors. So this is one colorway. This And this is the colorway that I did in the class. And this is the colors of the other one. And I know um, she just posted that she, on online the other day, that she added this colorway in her Etsy store. I'm going to order this colorway because even though I, you know, I, I like my choice, it was pretty. These colors in the class were so bright and vibrant and I'm going to stitch it again in these colorways. And she used some threads that I wasn't familiar with or I had never stitched with before. Um, one called Gumnut Silk, which I'd never heard of. And Steph Francis Spun Silk, which I'd also never heard of. But silks, whew, that talks directly to my stitching heart. And um, they were they were fun. They were interesting. So, I don't know how oh, it goes this way. So this is what the project look. This is how far we got stitching in class. She's fun to take classes with because she gives you lots of stitching time. So, but you can see here, I don't know if you can, how that's drawn on the canvas. And I have ordered other patterns from her, from her Etsy store, and um, you can get them drawn like this if you if you want to order the canvas from her. Um, or you can order just the pattern and she actually packages her patterns really nice I think um, and her stuff isn't really expensive but this is it's a good lesson in Bargello it's there are also great projects for laying threads if you're trying to practice laying threads especially with silk you know to get the best look out of silk you need to lay it nicely and I was up at um, a needlepoint store about an hour away from here called Queen Anne Stitches up in Santa Clarita with the brilliant Sherry Bray. Um, if any of you in the needlepoint world know of her. And she she says you lay silks because when you do, it picks up, when it's laid, it will pick up the different shading of the light and it'll make it look like you're using different color threads um, just because the, the silk picks it up. So, um... This is when we more smoke land. This one was strange because it's off center. So we kind of worked on that one for a little while. But this was the project. I haven't worked on it since I took the class, unfortunately. Um, but I'll get, I actually like the colors a little more than I did the day of the class. But the other colors are bright, bright, like almost like a purplish blue and a bright pink. And this was more you know, muted soft colors, but it was a fun class. It was a two day class that we took and, um, out in San with the San Bernardino American Needlepoint Guild in Ontario. I love taking classes out there. They, the class I'm going to in two weeks is out there. They do such a great job and they actually let you ghost a lot of classes, a lot of their workshops. And so even if you don't live in California, I recommend looking into them because um you can ghost and get an opportunity they have a class i've talked before about nancy coochie um they have a workshop with her coming up in may for her project called sisters which i have been waiting for and they're allowing ghosts for that class so you can get in on these workshops a lot of times even if you don't live in the area so um and they they do a great job out there so I definitely recommend it. So this is Bargello Trio by Terry Dryden. This was a class I took in February. I will finish this before the end of the year. I've just made that commitment to myself. It's not a super huge project, so, um, and it's a lot of repetitive, so it's nice. You can kind of relax into it. So I will finish this before the end of the year. You can all hold me to that. So, um, Another class that I'm taking, I've not started stitching, but I'm taking it, um, is with Queen Anne Stitches up in Santa Clarita that I just mentioned. It's a class with Sherry Bray. And it is, I have the cam, two of, it's a needlepoint, painted needlepoint canvas class. And Kirk and Bradley is who does the canvases. 
and it is a haunted house which Halloween houses just speaks to everything for me and then it has little um, canvases you stitch that then stand up in front of it that are little kids dressed as trick-or-treaters so cute and there's an optional canvas you can buy um, that has a tree so I'll get that down the line but right now we've done two of the stand-up figures in front and I think the class this month starts the house so but this was the first one how cute is he that's Frank his friend his name is Frankie and they're only I mean you can see they're not very big probably four inches maybe not super big and then this is the class we just had with I don't normally stitch animals so this one I wasn't too excited about but um maybe this will break my whatever I have about it my whatever stops me but um so they're all I don't think it has it printed so um we every month we do one canvas and then for three months it's the house and then we'll finish it it's a project that goes all year so and they're so fun up there that you know you just get to go up and stitch and hang out and you know they're the best they're so laid back and they're so fun it's not a super big shop but it's a great shop run by sherry bray helps run it and it's the um run the great owner heidi which they're wonderful and it's gotten me going back up there they do a stitching night once a month a month called friday fling and it's a drive for me but um because of this class they do the class the same day as friday fling so it's got me going back up there and hanging out with stitchers for a couple hours and stitching and stuff and I'm glad I'm glad to be back doing it plus I get to do this really cute project Sherry loves metallic threads and beads which I also love so I you know I love her stuff so we'll see and she's the it shares a lot of the same thread so there'll be consistency through the whole project so I'll keep you up to date as this one goes on but um they're just little and fun and I love Halloween I love Halloween and isn't it great about stitching that you can stitch holiday stuff all year. Like, you know, you can be sitting in the middle of the summer and be stitching something Christmas, and it's great. There there are no months in stitching. I love that. So um, that's a lot of fun. So this is a class I'm in the process of taking, and it will be all year. So, um, and I think you can still get in on it if you're interested. So um, they're, and they're terrific. I, I love, I love going up there and they welcome everybody in and you walk in their shop and they scream out your name. It's kind of like cheers, you know, when Norm used to walk in and everyone shouted his name. It's very, that's how it is up there. They're wonderful. So if you're ever in Southern California, if you don't live here and you're ever in here, go check them out because they're wonderful and they have a beautiful selection of threads. Um, and they're always hanging out and love to have people just come in and sit and stitch. You know, they just want you to come hang out. It's really terrific. So. Um, okay, so some other projects I've been working on, and this is one of my mini finishes. Um, so I'm taking a class in two weeks out in Ontario with Janet Casey, who's a needlepoint teacher, and she teaches every year the same weekend in April out in Ontario. It's a pilot class. She's never taught it, which means you cannot ghost it. Um, you have to go, but it's so fun. It's, I think I've talked about her before. It's three days worth of classes. Um, this will be the fourth year that I have gone and she does trains and well, last year it was a house, but, uh, the first year it was a Halloween train. The next year we did a Christmas train last year. She did a Valentine house. Um, and this year it's a 4th of July train. And, um, if you look on the ne American Needlepoint Guild, website you can see a picture of it because she's teaching it at seminar this summer that's why she's piloting the class she's getting ready for it and um so i decided that since i was going to be taking this class and doing another train and it's four different canvases so it's the it's a three-day class we go for three days um that I needed to finish one of them I, that i have not finished any of the projects i've taken from her shamefully and so at the beginning of the year, I tackled the Halloween train, which I had not pulled out of the bag since I took the class four years ago. Isn't that terrible? And so that's what I've been working on. And that's one of my mini finishes because I actually finished one of the cars. I'm so excited. 
and it is right here it's so cute look at that I looked these up at Halloween. I was like, oh, I wonder what names, because she said make up your own names to put on them. So I just kind of looked up Halloween graveyard signs and, oh, this one, see you later. Pearl E. Gates, Rip Van Winkle. But it, and you can see it sparkles. That's one of the things I love about, it's not picking this up. This is all sparkly right here. I guess you can kind of see it a little. I got a little distraught, though, I'll tell you, when I was doing this because I was putting in the background. And I was about halfway through, and I was just using so much thread. And I thought, and you buy the kit from her. It, so I didn't go buy all the stuff myself. And I kept looking at it and thinking, how is there enough threads in this kit to do all four canvases? And because the threads carry through all of them. And I just thought, well, what do I know? She stitched this, and she obviously knows more than I do. And um, and so I thought, I'm just, you know, what? Just just do it. It doesn't matter. And then I got about halfway. I got I had this all done, and I was down in here, and I went to check something on the pattern, and I realized that I had made a mistake, and that in between every line on the background is supposed to be a blank a blank row and i did it in every row which explains the massive use of thread and no i was not going to have enough thread <laughs> but i also was not going to pick it out i was not going to pull it out i personally don't like the canvas to show and so to me, it's it's more pleasing to the eye like that. So I just ordered more thread. I was like, oh, yeah, just have to get some more thread. So I just have to do them all like that, which is fine. But isn't that cute? Isn't that fun? And then I've been working. I have it sitting right next to me because I've been working on it this morning. I almost have the, the engine done. So this is my lights on it. So let me pull that off. This is the engine car. Look at that. And here's the funny part. The other night I was I had been stitching before I went to bed. And I put it down next to me and I got up to go to bed and I turned off the lights and I realized this glows in the dark, this glows in the dark, and this glows in the dark. I didn't even know till sitting there in the dark and I was like, what is that? And it was my canvas. So that's just about, I just have to finish just this little part here. And look at the ghost twinkles. You're supposed to put a smiley face and stuff on the ghost, but I think I like him just with eyes. And then, but you can see they'll sit, they sit like this. Isn't that cute? When you do the background, you're supposed to kind of line it up so that the zigzag in the background matches up. But that, isn't it cute? So I won't have all four canvases done by the class, but maybe two, maybe two of them. And I mean, they're just, and she does, so her projects are only, it's one of the ones I was saying, her projects are only available in classes. And um, so you got to jump at it while you can. And you know, there, hers are line drawn also, you can see the lines are drawn on it. But then it's it also involves counting, like the wheels you counted. She had a dot where the wheels were and then you counted where to make, you know, to make sure it fit. But this was all drawn in here. You can see the windows are drawn in. This you had to count to put in so and I just like I said look how it sparkles this this part here this was a little tough and I ended up again I don't like the I don't like to see the canvas I like really ha you know coverage as much as possible so I actually on the black and the gray there I doubled it so I ended up having to order more of this thread because I used more than necessary but because I just didn't like especially with black on a white canvas I, I just don't, it would drive me crazy if I saw it so one more look there it's gonna be so cute so mini finish almost mini finish and maybe this one will be done before the end of the year but you know when, when I pulled it out of the bag to work on it and I just thought it's so cute I can't believe this has been sitting in here and um so it's fun and I'm, I'm really looking forward to the class and and uh, three days of stitching can't be that. She also um, does an ornament class there, but I decided not to do the ornaments this year. Last year, I wish I had because they're actually really cute. 
Um, and if you're thinking about going to seminar, and she's a fun teacher, fun, 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 really funny. And we, we think we're in for some good stories because she lives in Houston and her house flooded. And so it should, there should be some interesting stories there. Um, so those are my, that's another project I have been working on. And then I just want to make sure, um, I have all this stuff sitting around me. It's a little messy. So, um, I have one more almost mini finish again that I'm calling it that I have been working on. This is my project. I take this to work with me and, um, we're going to on my lunch break and I am doing from last year getting these projects done. The uh, Stitch Rovia quotes that she did, the charity stitch along. And you can kind of see, this was the top part. There's a quote under here. I don't want to take it off because I'm, it's positioned right where I need it. So, um, and I'm choosing all my own colors on this one. But this, so this was this and the borders and up here was month one. This is month two. And I'm so close to being finished. I just have to finish right here, putting in the green, and then finish the border up here. And then it's all finished. It's all done. So I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna try and finish this part today. Actually, um, this is a fun project. I really I can't recommend it enough. And I'm really enjoying um, choosing my own colors. It's fun to play around with it, to lay them out and, oh, this will work. This one, like, I wasn't sure if this would work. Um, oh, right here. This was a bijou thread. And bijou is a metallic thread that is really thin. And I used two strands of it because it's that thin. And I wasn't sure if it would work, but I, it did. And I just kind of was like, well, let's try this. And it was so fun to see that it would work and kind of put the colors together and stuff. So mini finish well almost mini finish it'll be a mini finish today so um you know there it's just about done so and a good saying for stitching have patience have patience with all things most of all yourself so that's a good little stitching thing i i really love this project and i don't know that this will be finished this year um but We'll see. It'll be fun to see how much I can get done before the um, before the year is over. We'll see. We'll see where it's at. Um, okay. And two new starts. Well, I said one new start and one it. Well, they're both new starts. So the first is I showed you, I think on my last video, the canvas that I bought. Um, because I was in the Needlepoint store and I had to have it. Remember the fashion books? I had to have it and I've started it and the fun part is that nearly all the threads I'm using I had actually in my stash I don't have a big thread stash and so I wasn't sure how it was gonna work but it actually worked pretty good and um, so this is it I'm, I've just barely started it because and I have I know all the threads I'm using for all of it um, but I'm still I've just started trying to figure out stitches for it because I'm, it doesn't have a stitch guide yet. It's two. It's a new canvas, um, and so it doesn't even have a stitch guide. But I'm, it, I'm just doing it myself. Some ideas from the cookbook uh, canvas that I did. I'm using some ideas from there, and just some I'm just playing around with. So, I've, and so the reason I had to buy a few threads only because there's so much black in it and so much white, and I didn't want it all to be the same thread. So I got a few different threads, but see, like you can see here, like right here, I had this thread and I wanted to test it out to see if the stitch was going to work. And I think it is. I really like it. I put in a little bit, you can see of the gold trim right there. So I'm going to just do that. I've started on the Tiffany book right there. This is all done. The letters are done. And then trying out you know and I just ha you just kind of have to play around with it I already know the stitch and I have the thread for this one I think I'm going to do this one next um because I I know everything I want to do and this one I know everything I want to do so I'm going to jump on those next but I've been working on the train so but I mean this is just going to be cute 
when it's all finished. Um, so it's coming along. I mean, isn't that a darling canvas? And she just put out another one that's Halloween, but I, I'm trying to stay away from that one. So I, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying not to buy. I told you, like I, I, I do have a little bit of haul to show you because I'm trying not to buy stuff. Um, and my deep freeze, as we call it, is supposed to end next month, but I think I'm going to keep it going because it wasn't, I did buy something. So, and so, um, I'm trying to, I'm going to try and cut back more this year on buying stitching stuff. Just focus on what I have. So it's so far, but it's, it's the beginning. This will be fun to see how it, uh, how it plays out. And, um, it's a cute canvas though, isn't it? I really enjoy this one. So I've worked on that just a little bit. I have all my threads now though. It took me a little while to pull the threads and go through, you know, to see what I had. And then I took it up to Queen Anne with me last month when I went up um, with my, for my class. And it was funny because I knew that I wanted on the Tiffany one, I wanted it to look like a Tiffany box. And you know, that's a very serious look. It's not this color, it's not this green. And I was sitting there with a friend of mine and we, I was like, oh, I, you know, I want to match the Tiffany color. And she's like, well, here, and her glasses were Tiffany glasses and it had a little speck on the side with the blue. So we're going through the store holding up threads to the side of her glasses. And this is as close as we came to matching it. But thank goodness she was there because I, I in my head, it would have been the wrong color. So thank goodness she was there and had, how ironic she had Tiffany glasses on. So it worked really well. It was very helpful. And her head was my model for the day. So, and this is my other start that I am so pleased with. And this is a Chatelaine. And this one I started as part of the um, memorial they're doing this year for Martina to stitch on a Chatelaine. I started this one. Um, I've see, I saw this pattern on a uh, floss tube video by running stitch and hers is way further along and it's so pretty and I just had to do it. And so it is, let me show you, see, I'll show you the picture. It's really tiny. So I'm not sure, um, how well you're going to be able to see it, but it's called Persian Iris. Persian Iris Garden, and that's what it looks like, and oh, the window's glaring on it a little, but what I love, one of the things I love about it is it goes up into these buildings that are 3D, so it gets a real three-dimensional look to it. You know, this is like a pond that goes, or a, yeah, I guess you'd call it a pond, that goes out and, and up into the building, which is kind of cool. And you'll be able to see it in a little bit in just one second. My stitching, I kit, I kitted it up myself, um, and I do with most of her patterns. She does so she does her patterns in silk, but she gives you a DMC conversion if there's a DMC conversion available, and I do that because I can't afford to do all the all the silk, and. Um, this one, the majority of it, I could get in DMC, and I, I like the color. I mean, I can't say I don't know that it loses something with the color because um, I, don't, I don't have it in a version that's not, but I do I do buy, like, she does Gloriana Silk, and she does watercolors, and I do buy those because, um, especially if it's an over-dyed floss, so that you get that look. But in just in general, on the general color list, which is the majority of the colors, if there's a DMC conversion, I do it. Um, I'd rather stitch the piece than, you know. I do order from European Cross Stitch, who does the Chatelaine kits, I order the bead packs from them. Because I, I, to try and kit up the beads would probably be more expensive than ordering it just from them. And trying to find all the right beads and everything would be crazy. And they come in a really nice kit. And so I do order the, the, and I already ordered this one, the bead kits from them. So that is how far I've gotten. I'll zoom in. See, look at the sparkle. Can, I hope it comes out. This, this center is all. And this center part right here is all beads. This is all beads. This is all beads. But you can see, these are the palm, this is the outline of the palms. And it's funny, I ordered this, the fabric from... Uh, it's on, I do my, I do my shuttle lines on 18 count and, um, 
because I don't like stitching over two and so I do them on 18 count which is big enough I can see it and it doesn't make the project super crazy huge she does half stitches but on 80 you can split the threads it's it works fine um, but it um, the, I ordered the fabric, which was like a gray, it said like a grayish blue or something from one, two, three stitch. I couldn't have chosen a better fabric. And in fact, sometimes I have a hard time seeing this because it, it doesn't look like it on here, but it actually is really close to the same color. But I didn't want white because it does stand out a little bit. Um, like it doesn't fill in. I don't think here it fills in. And white would have really been blaring, I think, underneath it. So I'm glad I chose what I did. And, um, but you can see the effect. These are going to go up into the buildings. You know, it goes up in here and then the buildings up here. And I did have to use, you know, cause these are tiny, they're tiny and they're, these are split threads. And so I, I had to use a magnifier on those and on these just to make sure that I was sp splitting the thread correctly. I don't mind. I got a great new magnifier um, from Amazon for like 20 bucks and it has a light and it clips on right to the edge of the table and I can just pull the neck over and it works really great. So I've had a lot of fun with it. It's been my saving. I don't even know who makes it. Um, but I, I like it. My other one broke, so I had to get a new one. And so anyway, that's, and I do mine. I put my, um, it's on there on Q-snaps because, oh, you know, you can tighten it. So, this is my new grime guard I got for it. I didn't have one big enough, so. But that's it. Oh, it's being guarded by the ladies of Downton Abbey. So, um, I really like this one. Ooh, I'm going to sneeze. And, um, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I started this month ago, a little over a month ago. I haven't worked on it for a little while because I'm, I don't, you know, like I said before, I don't do rotations. I just stitch whatever moves me and the train has been talking to me. So, um, but this is my new start in and doing it all thinking of Martina as I've been stitching it. So, um, it's, I really, it's a nice one. I'm enjoying it. It's coming out actually even prettier than I thought it would. If you want to see, check out running stitches floss two videos and hers is beautiful and she's got the beads in and it sparkles and oh it's really beautiful she hasn't made a video in a really long time so I don't know how far along she is um I do follow her on Instagram and see that she's stitching again which I'm very happy because she stitches she and I she stitches a lot of stuff that I like and so I was happy to see she was stitching again so that's the stitching I've been doing um and I really it's been nice like I said work has been so busy so it's been really nice to um come home and relax and I think we all know that like it just you know to sit down and just focus on that and it's it's really nice so I do have a little bit of haul probably more than I should considering I'm on deep freeze but some of this stuff um well one I just bought a present to myself because I've been working so hard I deserved it and um the other ones, you know, I've been just, if there's something, you know, I've seen online that I don't know that I have the opportunity to get, I would nab it. And some, I just caved and bought it. So let's call it what it is. Um, so this was, someone was selling this online and I loved it. And so it's, I mean, look at that. I love New York. So I thought that as a full coverage would be really pretty by Mystic Stitch called Radio City Christmas. I love, I've, I've stood right on that corner, so um, I, I had to jump at that. I thought that was a great New York picture. Um, this one, so in Counted Needlepoint, there's a designer named, um, you may, I'm sure everyone's heard of, called Jean Hilton, um, who has passed away, but you can still get her patterns. You can get all her patterns from a store called Stitches by the Heart. I think they're in like, Iowa, Illinois, something like that. And someone, I don't think this is going to show up very well, but it, this is called Jean's Jewel and it says it's a study of textured stitches. Um, 
And someone has been posting online on the Counted Needlepoint group on Facebook who's stitching this, and it is spectacular. <laughs> and so I don't know. It's... I, I had to have it. I'm working on one other Jean Hilton right now. Jean Hilton patterns are not for the faint of heart, but they are worth every stitch. And, again, counted. Um, just some that are easier. But this one, the person who's doing online is doing different colors, too. But I, just, I had to have it. But, you know, kind of, they're not always available. So that's one I, had to, I jumped at because while it was there, I wanted to get it. This one, I just got this. And I'm so excited. Someone was selling this online. I have been wanting this pattern for about a year. Over a year. I saw someone at um, an EGA meeting I was at had just stitched it. And I saw it. And I've wanted it ever since. And someone was selling it with threads. What she was selling it for, the threads would have cost more. So I'd, I jumped at it. And this is what... So it's called... Dreaming of Geometry, it's by Linda K. Ryan Miller. And that's what it looks like. I don't think I'll stitch it on black, though. I'll find a different color fabric. Just I got, I'll match the threads to it. I'm just not a black fabric person. But um, someone posted when I got and when I nabbed it online, and she said, you'll love it. I consider this my masterpiece. And so I don't know how long I can hold off um, starting it. But that's what it looks like all done. This is going to be fun. I, You know, this will be fun to watch it develop. It, I don't think all of the threads are here. I have to go through it. But I think a lot of them are here. So, um, And like I said, what she was selling it for, the threads would have cost more. So that's my neighbor's dog. Do you hear that? Um, so the, and then these are a few, let's see. So I'm sure everyone knows the show, the, what do they call that? market or whatever in Nashville just happened and so they just released a few patterns and so I grabbed a few of those and I got this one which I is it's um, a quote by Laura Ingalls Wilder and it, they call it a prairie life sampler this is one they just featured at the Nashville show and it, um, I'm not a big sampler person but there was just, I watched Little House on the Prairie when I was growing up. And so, this was just, it just stood out. I don't know why. It just touched me. I just liked it. So, I I grabbed that one. Um, and then this one is one um, that it's going to be, it comes out monthly or, yeah, it comes out monthly by Glendon Place. Oh, it has it on back. So, this is what it looks like when it's all finished. It's brand new. Um, and I'm waiting for my fabric. My fabric didn't come with it, but so this is the centerpiece. The spook town square, they call it. I love, as much as I love houses, I love villages too. So, and Halloween, hello. You think I live in a mansion, how I'm going to hang all this stuff up? I do not. So, but that's what it looks like all finished. I've ordered this from Cindy Sorley on, um, Stitchery Cross Stitch. Fine Cell Stitcher Express. I don't know if she still has them, but it's cute. I like Glendon Play stuff, too. But I thought that was really sweet. And then I think every month you get two of them. Two or three of them. Something like that. But that's what it looks like all done. I'm sure you may have seen it online. I thought it was really cute. I need to find out where my fabric is, though. Um, and then this is my present I bought for myself because I've just been working hard. And I... Mirabilia, Hello. And it's Persephone. There she is. I finally got it. I've been wanting her for a long time. And I finally ordered it for myself. I have the beads. I bought the beads a while ago from a store that was closing. And so they were selling them like crazy cheap. And But I really... And, and Mirabilia's... You know, I'm getting so afraid of not grabbing a Mirabilia when you want it. Because then if it goes out of print. And the prices of these out of print patterns are just insane. And so... I've been a little buying more Mirabilia's just because you never know. And I'm not paying... Someone posted one the other day. I don't even know what the pattern was called, but they said it was an out-of-print Mirabilia. They were selling it on eBay for $2,000. I mean, is that serious? Is that even serious? But even... I mean, I see them for $500 or $400. And I, I can't... That's, that is not my world. So, 
I decided since I'd been working so hard, I got a present. Bought it for myself. And then this was the one that came out in February. She is a beaut. Look at her. Her name is Sun Goddess. Look at her. She's so regal sitting there in that chair. I love these ladies. I love them. And then, and I got the beads to go with it. It's just, it, again, it's like with these, it's just easier than trying to kit it up myself. Ooh, I didn't notice those sitting right there. Those are beauts. Look at that. Um, so, you know, I, I won't start her for a while, but at least she's here and I'm not going to have to pay $2,000 for her down the line. So, and then the last two, I got, I saw these on, ooh, this is going to fall, on one, two, three stitch, and I loved them. I got this, these are Rosewood Manor patterns, Autumn Quakers. Again, I'm not a big sampler person, but there's just something about this one I thought was really pretty. And this one. This one is like, it's called Emily Monroe Quilt. It's um, like a Baltimore album quilt that in my quilting life is my dream. Someday in my life I will make one. But in the meantime, I'll stitch one. And I just thought that was, look, I love all the different flowers. I bet that's really pretty. I'll stitched up too. I wonder how big it is. I don't know. I just thought it was pretty. You know, these won't be starts anytime in the near future, but they're here. They live here now, so I'm happy about that. So that's all my stitching. And, um, and it's, it, like I said, it has really been my saving grace these last few months. And, um, I have some, you know, some stuff coming up over the next, some work. I have a class this month. I have the Janet Casey class this month. I have the Nancy Cucci class next month. And then, as I'm, well, except for the Halloween class that's the all year, that's the last of my classes for right now, for the year. So, um, it'll be good. Then I can focus more on my project. So, um, so a little book update. Binge watching update. I don't have much of, my binge watching has been very sad. But because, well, it hasn't been sad. I've loved it, but... Um, I've just been catching up on shows that I've been behind on um, because I've I've been busy and haven't been haven't had a chance and so I caught up on I binged watched this season of um, The Big Bang Theory because I was watching it piecemeal here and there and so I just watched it binged watched it last weekend actually because um, I couldn't remember what I'd seen and what I hadn't so I binge watched that I binge watched to catch up on Once Upon a Time which is ending. Um, which I love, but this season has been very confusing. I don't know if any of you watch it, but I've been very confused. And this weekend, it's on my TV right now. That's what I'm looking at. I'm catching up on Modern Family. And I finally yesterday caught up on Grey's Anatomy. And, um, so that's, that's the binge watching I've been doing. I finally, uh, finished the latest season of Grace and Frankie, but I had to go back and start it again because I, um, couldn't remember what was happening and I took a, some days off about two weeks ago and so while I was off I spent a day stitching and binge watching that so um, really that's what I've been ca doing catching up on but I've been reading some good books and um, Amanda is a big reader too so we talk about books a lot which I really like and she um, recommends some just some good recommendations that I've read and but I finished one I've been checking them out at the library because I've also been trying to cut back on spending money on books. So I don't have it to show you, but I read the latest book by um, Lisa C. S. E. E. called The Tea Girl of Mockingbird Lane. And um, it is about a young girl who grows up in China um, and in the tea industry, which I, I did not know all the history of that and the village that she came from. And it was very interesting. A lot of, um, information on Chinese culture, which was very interesting. Um, and really beautifully written. This is the second book I've read by her and I will read more. I really enjoyed it. Um, I also read the newest one by, I don't know how to say her last name, Celeste Ning and G. I'm not sure how you say it called little fires, fires everywhere. It was pretty good. 
um, didn't rock my world, but kept me interested enough to read it till, you know, to finish it and see what happened. And so, um, I enjoyed that one, but this one, I just finished this the other day. I, and then I got to take it back to the library called the woman in the window by AJ Flynn Finn. So good. So intense. And, um, I have never been a mystery book reader, but I will tell you I'm getting more into it and I'm really enjoying it. This one, by the end of it, I thought I was going to have to sleep with the lights on and I couldn't put it down. And so this is, if you're looking for just a good engrossing read, this is a good one. Um, so I, you know, I got mine at the library, so, um, but it's a great one. So been doing some reading and, but, and stitching and it's, it's been, it all is good. So I'm happy to say. So I'm glad to be back talking to everyone. I, I just want to thank you again um, for watching and for subscribing to my channel, for your comments. I, I'm sorry I don't get to answering them. I want to give a shout out to Andrea. Um, I heart cross stitch. She sent, she posted me a really lovely message and uh, I, I watch as many floss tube videos as I can. I haven't been able to get to many, but hers is one I, I try and keep up on. So hi, Andrea. And um, from the other side of the country, she lives in Florida, so hello from California. And um, But I just want to thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. And um, I do read them. They mean a lot to me. They they really they keep me going you you keep me going so i just wanted to say thank you and a uh, kiss to rem riley and sawyer and i will see you soon and thank you for watching happy stitching and uh, i hope to get you another video in a month or so all right have a good day and i'll see you soon bye